Are you having trouble getting sales with influencer marketing and your Shopify store? Well, today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how you can start making $100 per day. Hey guys, this is Broke to Beast, where we make videos about starting your own business, online or offline, as well as follow along my own journey. Before we start, if you like entrepreneurship and business content, make sure you go down below and subscribe because we post videos every day about helping you achieve your success. All right guys, so now we're here in my computer and I'm going to show you the quick steps that you need in order to have a, su a successful Instagram influencer campaign together with your Shopify store. So if you, if you still don't have Shopify store, you can come here to Shopify and click on get started. And after this, you just enter your information and you'll be taken to the Shopify store. Once you have your store, you can come to AliExpress and by using Oberlo, you can import the, the products that you wish to your store. So imagine you're going for fitness, for the fitness niche. You can look at these products over here. You can import some of these products to your store. Now, although your store doesn't have to be only one niche, I'd recommend you to start with only one niche and test test it out with influencers so you can know that it does, it's not working out and you can move on to the next. The next part of your journey for your Shopify store is to start finding influencers to promote your products. So basically, influencer marketing is when you find influencers in your niche on Instagram or any social platform that have a significant following that will talk about your products in exchange for money or other goods that you can offer them, such as free products. So if your niche is fitness, the first thing you have to do is search for fitness influencers on Instagram. If you do a search on the search bar for fitness, hashtag fitness, or for example, hashtag fitness model, you'll be able to see here tons of posts of people that are filters. And then you can open up these accounts to see who are these people. And once you have the accounts, you just need to ser search for the name and contact information of the person. So, so for example, this girl has 20,000, 21,000 followers. And the next thing you have to do is look in the description for if she's already monetizing her audience or not. So in this case, she is she's doing an affiliate product. She has an affiliate link here for a specific shop. So you could go through her to sell your products. And the good thing is that the only thing you need to do now before contacting the influencer is to see if the influencer is engaging with your audience or not. So to check the quality of the influencer, the first thing you have to do is go to socialblade.com and then here on top, go to Instagram and copy the at of the influencer, paste it and search for it. And it should show you the profile of the Instagrammer. So here we can see the amount of followers she's getting per day and the graphic of followers. And this is what you want to see in an Instagram account, especially something that is personal, like when she's putting her own name in the, the page, which is a linear progression of followers. Because sometimes you can have spikes here and sometimes those spikes can be natural due to partnerships or other things on Instagram's uh, account. However, a lot of times they are fake followers. So people, the, the Instagrammer, in order to make more money with the account, they just buy followers. But here you can see it's a linear progression, which means it's it should be a highly engaged audience. Also, you can see here the amount of likes and comments on the photos. I suggest you to look for engagements of five to 10% of the amount of following in terms of likes and 2.5 to 5% of comments. Now in this case, there might not be that many comments and that's fine. The most important is the number of likes. However, that also can be faked, so just beware. So if you want to check the engagement rates, just come to flanks.com slash engagement calculator and type, just paste the 
at here, the Instagram at. And, and as you can see, you the engagement rate of the influencer here, which is 8.56, which is in the range we want between five to 10%. Yeah, so as you can see, this influencer could be a very good option to contact for your brand and to partner up with. So if you decide, you can go for this influencer and ask them if they'd like to collaborate with you through DMs or through their preferred contact method, which is in this case would be DMs or email. I can't see the email here because it's the browser version. So let's check out another influencer. Here's Kala Lanch. She's a mom and she's also into fitness, as you can see. And so this could be also a pretty good option. So the first thing we do is copy the at, come here to social blade, paste it, search. As you can see, she's not really gaining or losing any subscribers here, which is not a bad sign. It could be just a regular change. And as you can see here, I wouldn't suggest this influencers, uh, this influencer, as you can see, because it has too many abrupt jumps, jumps like from one day to the other. However, the jumps are not that big, in my opinion, which means that it might just be sudden jumps that she had because she started posting more or other reasons that we might not know because the jumps are I'd say at max 6.9 to 7.3 which is around 400 subscribers which is pretty high but she might have done maybe a, a special post with somebody so we never know but still I wouldn't suggest her however let's check on flanks to see what her engagement rate is and as we can see here, the engagement is pretty low, 1.93%. So I would definitely not suggest this influencer because it's out of our range and it's just not worth it to waste time. Even if they might have a, a real audience, the engagement is not there, which means they won't take action when your post will be live. So here's our third example to see if, the, if this would be a good idea in order this is not to just judge any race or anything, but most Middle Eastern or uh, Asian countries, Asian audiences, I'd say, uh, don't really have that much buying power and or are not really used to buying things online, especially English websites, which means I wouldn't call this a pretty a, a, a good influencer to go with because you can see here he has Arabic written on top. So a lot of the audience is probably Middle Eastern or Asian, I'd say. However, let's just still copy to see the data on Social Blade and Flanks. So if you copy and paste it, you can find here that there's not really many spikes. And I'd say that this is also pretty natural, nothing that big. This jump is nothing crazy. It's pretty linear. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite fine. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's it's good. And if we go to flanks, and we copy and paste it. We can see that the engagement rate is also pretty good, eight percent. But still, considering the fact that this account probably has a, an audience that is more from Middle Eastern countries or Asian countries, I wouldn't go with this because in my experience, at least, even accounts that are, were from India or other places, they really don't work out. There's a lot of people commenting, a lot of people liking, but not a lot of sales, especially because if your website is in a different currency, they won't really want to buy it because they might think it won't arrive. So yeah, after you've chosen some Instagram influencers, I suggest you maybe to think about also YouTube influencers for three reasons. The first one is because I'd say is less saturated, less people are doing influencer marketing on YouTube. The second is that you have an, a bigger ability to show your products on video, which is much more powerful than just a simple image. Although on Instagram, you can do a video for your product, which is, is also good. But if it's natively inserted into the video, I'd say it's much more powerful than a simple video on Instagram. And third reason is because 
uh, if you collaborate with a YouTuber, they probably might have an, an Instagram account as well, which means you can have a double post, one on YouTube and one on Instagram. So yeah, I'd say maybe give it a try. I'll have a video on the description where you guys can check out how to find YouTube influencers or influencers in general. Basically, there's an influencer marketing playlist on the bottom where I suggest you to check it out and look at all the videos. Anyways, I hope this helped and make sure you go, guys go down below and subscribe and leave a like if you like this type of video and if you thought it was helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or any topics that you'd like me to talk about in this channel. And until next time, peace.